Hi, it's Stu Richards. Thank you for joining us today on our latest webcast. Today, we're going to be sharing new research on how small and mid-sized businesses research applications and other technology solutions for their business. What I wanted to do as folks uh, log in is give you a quick overview for Br of Braden. For those of you who might not be familiar with us, we are a B2B consultancy that helps clients to better understand and engage with small to mid-sized businesses. You can see the folks uh, with whom we've worked uh, in a wide range of industries with a wide range of definitions of SMBs, whether it's by headcount or by revenue or by industry, stage of growth, you name it. Um, what we do is really two things. Um, first, we conduct research to help our clients to better understand the mindset of the small business audience. And that can be in a wide range of topics. As you can see on the left, um, we explore all kinds of aspects of business management um, for our clients. And we do that in a variety of ways, um, whether it's through qualitative or exploratory research, through groups or IDIs, uh, or through quantitative research, which can be fully custom uh, or via this uh, SMB Pulse, which is where we sourced the data, which uh, I'll share with you as we go. Um, we also provide a variety of analytic methodologies um, for clients. So if it's important to understand, you know, for example, how to prioritize benefits or how to optimize pricing or uh, package components, we can do that uh, or help with market segmentation or um, all kinds of different um, analyses. But the ultimate point or um, you know, uh, functionality or goal of the research that we deliver is either to help with internal decision making around, you know, for example, how best to go to market, uh, what to bring to market, specifically in terms of product uh, features and functionality, um, or to understand how our customers are benefiting from, or, you know, what their experience is with utilization of a product. Uh, or we do a lot of research that's designed to support outbound. Um, specifically, that means conducting research to generate data that you might use in content marketing programs, PR campaigns for sales collateral, to share with partners, uh, you name it. The other side of the house here at Braden is developing content for outbound programs that of course can be based on, con on research, I should say, that we deliver for you. Uh, it might be based on research that you have from third parties or in-house, uh, or it might be totally uh, how-to or you know case study oriented. For example, you can see the formats uh, in which we develop cust you know, custom content for you, um, but regardless of its sourcing or objective, uh, or uh, what it's based on, our goal is to enhance your position as a trusted advisor to the small business audience and to enhance their understanding of how they can benefit from a relationship with you. So with that message from your sponsor, what I wanted to do is jump right into the research today. So um, we conducted some research in November and December of you know, late last year uh, around a couple of topics, really with the goal of helping you understand um, what it is that small business owners are looking for now in 2022, specifically in terms of the applications they plan to adopt, whether it's upgrading existing applications or buying you know, kind of net new, um, how to reach them in terms of which media they prefer uh, or which content they use, um, what to say to them, what messaging resonates best, uh, and who specifically target within an organization. Um, in terms of how we generated this data, we used our SMB Pulse, which is a survey that we conduct each month of 500 principles of US businesses with up to 500 employees. It's a different set of 500 respondents, but the same firm of graphics every month. Um, and the way the Pulse works is it's an omnibus survey, meaning that you can participate in it if you'd like, and uh, there would be another participant as well. Obviously, the questions that you ask are you know, separate from and confidential to you. Um, so you know, if you were in there with another client of ours, um, your data would be proprietary to you as would theirs to be to them. Um, but the makeup of the panel is that it consists of 250 principals, meaning owner, founder, partner, managing director, CEO, president, someone like that, uh, at companies with 20, under 20 employees, 150 from companies with 20 to 99 employees, we call those small businesses or SBs, um, and then 100 
respondents from companies with 100 to 500 employees. We call them mid-sized businesses or MBEs throughout the deck. Where we present the uh, data in aggregate or in total, we do weight it so it's representative of the small business universe overall, which is of course um, vastly represented by uh, very small businesses. They make up 98, 98% of all companies with under uh, 500 employees. Um, but I'll take you through how we have presented the data. And we've also conducted significance testing. So you'll see occasionally um, the difference between the size groups uh, indicated by letter. And that just means where there's really a meaningful statistical difference between the way respondents um, answer the survey questions. Um, and we'll call those out where they're uh, germane here. And again, we conducted this research just at the end of the year, actually October. I said it was November, December. It was the end of October, early November of last year um, in our pulse. Um, I won't belabor this just in terms of who participated. And by the way, I'm happy to share a copy of this deck um, after the presentation. Um, so please just shoot me an email if you'd like this. You don't need to do like screen grabs or take notes or anything. Um, I'm also happy to share a recording if you'd like. But the um, gist of the respondents is, you know, all principles, as I mentioned, for a mix of company sizes up to 500. Um, you can see the age of the company, uh, company revenue, location, uh, population density, industry. We don't put any quotas, um, so this is pretty close to natural distribution. Um, and in terms of demographics, a uh, pretty good mix of male versus female. That's typically what we see. Good mix by respondent age, uh, education level, race, all that stuff. But to jump right into the data that our respondents shared, um, the, one of the questions that we wanted to understand is, you know, in light of COVID in particular, um, what is their business status? You know, for example, are they open for business completely? Meaning, you know, if they're a restaurant, uh, their whole space is open for full hours and um, or, you know, if they're a movie theater, uh, they're open. Um, and as you can see, uh, pretty much regardless of company size, about four and five SMBs are now back to being fully operational. This is obviously, you know, October, November, so things are gonna have bounced around a little bit between now and then. Um, but it is a huge improvement over the research we did last May, uh, where roughly the same percentage of FM, SMBs, I'm sorry, VSBs, were fully open, but only 69% of SBs were, and only 59% of MBs have. So the SMB population has come back, you know, very strongly uh, from the COVID uh, pandemic. And as you can see, they're pretty optimistic if you look down at the bottom of the slide. And the bigger the company is, the more optimistic they are, in this case, about their growth outlook uh, for, you know, their revenue expectations for 2021 versus 2020. Um, but we see very similar uh, optimism for 2022 over 2021. So, you know, in general, obviously, SMBs have taken a huge beating uh, via COVID, but uh, there's a fair amount of optimism, especially among companies with more than 20 employees um, for 2022. How that translates into purchase activity, specifically in terms of applications, um, pretty well. Um, so if you look here, uh, what we did is just said, okay, if you are a user of these particular applications, and you can see the application categories down the left-hand side of your screen, um, what's your plan to upgrade them? You know, how likely are you to upgrade them this year? Um, and as you can see, 38% of respondents, for example, with one to 19 employees plan to upgrade their marketing solution. That is, you know, if they have one um, at some point in uh, this year, which is huge. And if you look across the bars, you know, you'll see they tend to get longer. You know, the percentages tend to increase the bigger the company is. Not hugely, not a lot of statistically significant differences. Um, but it is interesting, the difference in prioritization uh, by company size. So for example, for very small businesses, those who have customer service software are most likely to upgrade it, uh, which is tied with design and illustration software. So good news for folks from you know, Adobe or Canva, uh, for example. And then for marketing applications, of which there's obviously a very wide range, you know, like uh, HubSpot or uh, uh, MailChimp, you know, for example, um, those are set for big increases as well. On the part of small businesses, again, which we define for the purposes of this research as companies with 20 to 99 employees, they're most likely to upgrade their collaboration software. Um, and second, you know, very close behind that, most likely to upgrade their customer service software tied with marketing or e-commerce applications. 
And then for the biggest companies, the MBs, 100 to 500 employees, they're most likely to upgrade their design and illustration software, like very small businesses, except at a much greater uh, extent, 71%, almost three out of four, plan to upgrade uh, their design and illustration capabilities at some point this year. Uh, roughly two out of three plan to upgrade their customer service. Um, and, you know, coming in third for the biggest businesses, video conferencing software, so solutions like Teams or Zoom or, you know, WebEx, GoToMeeting, um, are continuing to grow even as, you know, many businesses are in some way, shape or form uh, returning to the office, uh, however tentatively or not. Um, the other thing that we wanted to get at in terms of understanding application adoption was for companies that don't have uh, software in a particular application category. This is, you know, same set of applications as on the previous slide, but for folks who don't have them, um, we said, okay, you know, how likely are you to adopt them this year? Um, and again, there is a real difference in adoption plans by company size. So for example, and we included, you know, hardware for your uh, PCs, laptops, desktop computers, uh, very small businesses are most likely to get that, you know, relative to any other uh, technology solution that we surveyed here. Um, second, most likely to get some sort of document creation and management. That was a pretty broad category that includes um, office suites like uh, Microsoft Office. Uh, it includes uh, document signature like DocuSign. It included document backup and sharing like, uh, you know, Carbonite, for example, Box, Dropbox. Um, so there was a wide range of applications there, but lots of uh, purchase intent in that category among very small businesses. And likewise, for accounting and financial management packages like a FreshBooks or QuickBooks or Quicken, um, huge purchase intent there uh, on the part of very small businesses, again, who don't have that kind of solution for this year. Um, and as you can see uh, in the small business column, um, bigger purchase intent across the board, um, but in a slightly different set of categories. So internet access, which is frankly surprising, you would think that most of those businesses would be uh, online already because here we were asking about net new installation, but regardless of how you define it or how you know, response saw it as a uh, option, um, big plans to get internet access uh, in 2022. Um, the second most, uh, the highest purchase intent was actually a three-way tie between getting hardware, you know, PCs, laptops, desktops, and we didn't ask about all the other, you know, options of like servers and printers and that kind of stuff, but um, obviously, um, as the, you know, downturn uh, kind of elapses, uh, there's a lot of interest in either uh, upgrading dated technology or, you know, getting new functionality and hardware, um, marketing and e-commerce applications, uh, and accounting and financial management software uh, is tied for second, you know, very much like uh, it was for uh, very small businesses. And then for the biggest businesses, um, over on the right, 100 to 500 employees, they're most interested in getting CRM solutions like a Salesforce. Um, second most interested in payroll solutions or PEO. So like an ADP or a Paychex or Augusto or, uh, you know, perhaps a workforce uh, kind of solution, uh, UKG. Um, and then third most interested in PCs, laptops, desktop computers. So it's interesting, you know, the PC category um, is in the top three regardless of company size. So definitely good news, you know, for the Dells and Lenovo's excuse me, and Lexmarks uh, of the world. Um, what we wanted to get at um, here, but I'm going to ask for your opinion first, is which kind of media um, small business owners um, use to conduct research on products and services. So I'm going to give you a minute. Um, and I just want to get your take, and I'll, re I'll reveal the results in a moment. But just um, if you can enter what you think uh, SMBs are most likely to use to conduct research on products and services for their business. Okay, answers are coming in. I'll give you a couple more seconds. Okay. Well, this is good. We're getting good response. Okay, five more seconds, four, three, two, 
All right, thank you for voting. That's great. And um, here is what we got. Okay, so 10% set a vendor's website, um, which we actually break up into two different areas, whether it's the product section of the site or the resources section of the site, 3% said Facebook, 20% rating and review sites, 30% said search, 37 said word of mouth. That's great. Thank you uh, for participating in that. Um, and the real answer, at least according to the 500 folks that we uh, surveyed, is search. Um, and it's interesting. The um, Search is the number one way that all respondents, regardless of company size, are likely to conduct research on solutions for their business, um, followed by word of mouth. So for you, uh, those of you that guessed word of mouth, you were very close. Uh, also, for those of you who guessed Facebook, yes, it's very popular, especially among very small businesses. They're third most likely to use it after search and word of mouth. Um, as a way to conduct research. Um, but it is interesting for third, you know, for example, um, the for the second uh, tier businesses, small businesses that are here in orange, again, the 20 to 99 employee segment, they're third most likely to use business or general news sites. So like a Bloomberg, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, uh, for example. Um, and for the biggest businesses, really interesting, live events or trade shows, um, even though many, many, many of those have been off air for the past, you know, 18 months to almost two years now. Um, but it is interesting, you know, to the degree to which you're considering participation in events. And, you know, obviously you probably saw a lot of folks dropped out of CES not too long ago because of, you know, COVID fears and that still exists, hopefully receding. But um, events and trade shows, especially for bigger consumers or, or bigger SMBs are clearly uh, very interesting, as is, you know, LinkedIn, as is uh, business news and, you know, general sites, um, as is Facebook, um, for example. So um, what I think is really interesting is, you know, the difference in utilization by very small businesses versus mid-sized businesses. Because you can see, you know, if you just eyeball across every one of the media categories that we used here, the bigger the company, the more likely they are to use that category. Um, so, you know, as a general rule, media consumption increases with company size. Um, and what that means is that in a way, it's easier to reach larger companies because they're more likely to be on, you know, whatever media you choose and conversely harder to reach very small businesses because they tend to be concentrated in a few key media. You know, in this case, for example, utilization of search, word of mouth, uh, Facebook, YouTube, uh, for example. Um, the other thing I think is really interesting is the importance of your website. Um, so if you look on the fifth one over on the top row here, product section of a vendor's website, that's really important for everybody. And that's obviously, you know, where you articulate, you know, what it is that you offer and, you know, hopefully who specifically are there for and what the benefits are. Um, but we also have right next to that, the resources section of a vendor's website. So, you know, that's where you might have your articles or videos or blog posts or whatever um, that help put your offerings in context or provide case studies or you know, whatever it is that helps business owners understand, again, the benefits of your offerings, the benefits of a relationship with you. Um, both of those are really, really key at the research stage, um, as are you know, many of these uh, different kinds of tactics. Um, when we conducted similar research in May, um, we asked about a different stage of the sales cycle, which is the awareness stage. So, you know, for essentially the same, not identical, but a very similar list uh, of media, we asked, okay, which of these are you most likely to use to first learn about solutions for your business, whether it's products or services? Um, and obviously that's complemented now by in green, the responses that you just saw. This is aggregate. Uh, this is also weighted, so it really does tend to reflect the responses of the very smallest businesses in our survey. Um, but you can see there's really a difference in media consumption at the two different stages of the sales cycle, first learning about and then conducting research on. And yes, we will have follow on research uh, that we'll talk about, you know, what they use to make a final purchase decision. Um, but what's really interesting to see is search is what they are most likely to use at both the initial awareness and then the research or consideration stage of the sales cycle, um, quite a bit more at research uh, than at uh, initial awareness. Um, YouTube plays a very big role uh, specifically for awareness, but also is really important for research. 
Um, and then third at the awareness stage is business or general news sites. Um, but for uh, the smallest businesses, uh, actually Facebook, uh, I'm sorry, for um, the research stage, Facebook is, you know, second most important, um, you know, as opposed to business or general news sites. Um, but it's interesting, again, you know, as you look across the board, uh, the media consumption in pretty much every case is much higher for research than it is uh, for uh, awareness. The next thing that we wanted to get at in addition to the sources of media that they use is, you know, which specific influencers they follow. And the short answer is it's all over the place. Um, and this is really interesting. We didn't break out uh, responses by size um, and you do tend to see a big difference. Uh, you know, very small business owners tend to follow, you know, the big names, the Dan, Dave Ramsey's, the Gary Vaynerchuk's, the, you know, uh, Musk's or Zuckerberg's of the world, Joe Rogan's, um, and bigger businesses tend Tend to be a little bit more industry specific. Um, the other thing that we see is that um, awareness of any one individual influencer tends to be very low among very small businesses, with the exception, of course, of again, of the big name like a Musk or Zuckerberg or uh, Vaynerchuk. Um, but as a general rule, uh, awareness of any given influencer tends to be very low among very small businesses and increase with company size. Um, and the short answer here, you know, if you look, there's no big, you know, kind of easy to access influencers uh, who carry a lot of sway with the small business audience. Um, and, you know, a lot of the, uh, folk, you know, a lot of recognition uh, of influencers, it's really based on, you know, kind of business success The you know, Warren Buffett's or Bill Gates or, you know, Mark Zuckerberg's of the world, um, not so much necessarily by their media presence or, you know, how much they're blogging or podcasting, for example. Um, the other thing that we wanted to do is to understand which specific media they see as important. And it's you know pretty similar dynamic in that there are a few that are really top of mind, like Forbes, Wall Street Journal, uh, Business Insider, Washington Post, New York Times, which you would expect. Lots and lots and lots of niche publications like Boat Magazine, you know, for example, or uh, in Crunchbase Consulting Magazine. Um, so those are either role specific or industry specific, or in some cases affinity uh, relevant, um, but uh, there's a wide range of media uh, to which SMBs uh, kind of subscribe or follow. Um, and obviously, you know, the media plan that you develop is gonna be very focused on who specifically uh, you're trying to reach. Uh, we also wanted to get, and this is a little bit of bias on our part because we are a content shop. So we always like to keep current on what is most relevant to business owners in terms of content formats, and in particular at the different stages of the sales cycle. So here we just said, okay, you know, for each of these different content formats, and you can see those uh, listed down the side on the left, um, how likely are you to use them to conduct research on products or services for your business? Um, and we gave them, you know, basically uh, five options from, you know, very unlikely to very likely. This is just the percent of folks in each size bracket that responded very likely. Um, and again, it's really interesting to see the differences by size, both in, um, in two different criteria. One, the specific format that they like, and also the degree to which they like or utilize those formats. Um, their business along both, they're different, I should say, on um, both dimensions by business size. So um, what you can see, if you look at the very smallest businesses, the highest percentage that say they're very likely to use it is 23, as opposed to, you know, 58%. Uh, for example, of mid-sized businesses who like uh, research reports. Um, the other thing that you see, which is really interesting uh, in terms of differences by company size, is the degree of difference from the most popular to the least. So, you know, for example, for video among very small businesses, 23% um, like it down to tweets, 12%. Um, whereas the range, you know, the, the variability or beta is much lower the bigger the company gets. Meaning again, like media, um, the bigger the company, the higher the consumption, but also um, the much more likely they are to use all media. Um, so again, relatively easy to target bigger businesses because they're very likely to consume all of these kinds of content formats as they are likely to utilize all different sorts of media. 
Whereas with smaller businesses, um, if you just utilize a smaller set of targeted media, you can reach them uh, more efficiently. And in terms of the specific formats that they like, um, video ranks really high. And it's interesting, that's been kind of creeping up obviously over the years and it had been kind of doing battle with articles for the most popular format. It's most popular among very small businesses by a hair in this survey. Um, articles, and there's also an element uh, of preference by age, of course. So you'll see, you know, boomers and to a lesser degree Gen X like uh, kind of older school formats like articles, whereas uh, millennials tend to be, you know, a little bit more video centric um, but as a general rule you know having video and articles is great if you can do that you know if your budget supports it facebook also really popular uh, for very small businesses and we saw that of course you know very small businesses really like to use facebook to conduct research uh, on offerings for their business um, for small businesses uh, 20 to 99 in orange a um, little bit different set they also like video most as do very small businesses but their second uh, most likely to use LinkedIn uh, as a way to conduct research. Um, and third, most likely, um, well, actually, it's a tie uh, with LinkedIn uh, to use interactive tools, meaning specifically a calculator or a quiz or some way to get customized information, you know, ideally around the benefits that your solution provides uh, to their particular business situation. Um, and then also different from either of the other two subgroups are mid-sized businesses. Um, they are most likely to use a research report, which is near and dear to our heart, um, but we do see that um, research, basically meaning voice of peers, is really powerful with small business owners because it's great, you know, to be able to demonstrate how uh, powerful or useful or effective your solution is, but it's really great for business owners to hear that from folks like themselves um, who can really articulate it, uh, you know, without a perceived agenda and, you know, really talk about what the implementation and utilization has been like for their business. Um, so research reports can be a really powerful way to generate press and to generate attention and credibility, uh, especially among uh, the largest businesses. Um, but very close behind that, number two is LinkedIn posts. Um, in Tide, actually for a second here, is analyst reports. So, you know, the gardeners or foresters or um, you know, those carry a lot of sway. Those brands don't, you know, just like influencers, they tend not to carry as much weight. They're just not as well recognized among very small businesses. Um, but for bigger businesses, especially the 100 to 500 segment, um, those can be really meaningful. As we did with media, uh, we also asked about uh, formats, um, you know, depending on their utilization at different stages of the sales cycle. So over on the left in red, this is from a question we conducted uh, in research last May around which content formats they like to use to first learn about uh, different solutions like a loan or a merchant payment processing solution or, you know, printer, you name it. Um, and in this case, they're most likely to use articles, as you saw on the previous slide, video, uh, they're most likely to use at the research stage. Um, and again, this is weighted data, so this really reflects the answers of the smallest businesses. Um, articles are, you know, either num number one or number two, depending on the stage uh, of the sales cycle here. So great tool to have in your toolkit. Email newsletters, not surprisingly, really powerful way for small businesses to learn about your offerings, you know, whether they're current customers or folks that you have as, uh, you know, prospects. Um, and then Facebook also really powerful, uh, whether you're at the first learn or at the consideration stage. Uh, and yes, we'll also be researching that to update our data on, you know, which content formats work best uh, at close or, you know, the purchase decision stage. Um, the next area, you know, as I mentioned in the agenda that we wanted to understand in addition to, you know, what solutions they're looking for and where they look for information on them is what they most want to learn about. And specifically by that, I don't mean features, but I mean, in terms of the benefits to them. Um, so this is really to help with messaging to the degree that this is, you know, relevant to your product offerings. But um, what business owners want to hear, you know, for example, for very small businesses is that your solution helps them improve their offerings. You know, that's really compelling to them. 63% said that that's very important. 
Um, very close behind, 61% said it improves our capabilities or functionality in some way, shape, or form. And third, uh, also very close behind at 60%, uh, it improves their ability to serve customers, which is actually first for small businesses, again in orange, the 20 to 99 sector, um, but for small businesses, uh, what they also want to understand is how your offering improves their competitiveness. Um, you know, so it helps them, you know, win bids, uh, for example, or you know, have a better offering uh, than their peers. Um, and also important for small businesses is lowering costs. So to the degree that you can demonstrate your solution is going to help them uh, to economize in some way, that can be very powerful. Um, and then for the biggest businesses, MBs and Gray on the right, they're most interested, and this is actually very consistent with other research uh, that we've done, um, they're most interested in understanding how your offering improves their data security. So whether that is your priority, like, you know, you're a McAfee or a Sophos, for example, or, you know, you just have a solution for them, like an accounting or, you know, data storage and backup or whatever, um, to the degree that you can uh, assuage their concerns about security, that's going to be really important, um, as is uh, helping them understand how you can help them take advantage of growth opportunities and uh, helping to communicate or helping them understand how you can improve their employee productivity. Um, so it's interesting, three-way tie for number one. Um, and again, to the degree that you can message, um, you know, again, if you're targeting companies of 100 to 500 employees, um, that your solution is really secure, is gonna keep their data as secure as possible, you're gonna help them grow, you're gonna help them maintain employee productivity, that's really gonna resonate with them. Um, and it's interesting, you know, again, the same dynamic holds here as it did with, you know, media consumption, content consumption. The bigger the company, the more interested they are in every benefit, um, as opposed to, you know, VSPs being most interested in a few top benefits and not so interested in, you know, what they consider to be least important. Um, and then the last question that we wanted to get at is um, understanding who specifically within an organization um, helps with research um, of particular solutions. So we just asked about nine different uh, application categories here. Um, and there's a little bit going on, so let me explain. Um, what the respondent had was the opportunity to select themselves, you know, and the answer option there was you. Uh, that would be the principal because that's who we surveyed. Uh, or they could choose, you know, for example, their CPA or peers and colleagues or the head of HR, the head of IT, head of marketing. You know, there were quite a few folks. Um, but we really wanted them to choose one person uh, for each of these nine different application categories. And as you can see, um, most of these bars are dark blue, meaning that in most cases, the principal, the respondent, uh, who's the head of the organization, sees themselves as the person who's most likely to conduct research uh, on given solutions in every case. Um, and that is not necessarily the case. <laughs> so I think there's, you know, perhaps a little bit of respondent bias here, uh, but they certainly perceive themselves as being the researcher, you know, whether they're actually the one in a 500 person organization who's determining whether they should be using, you know, a particular accounting package or, you know, whatever the solution is. Um, but they certainly see themselves that way. So for targeting, really important to make sure that you have uh, you know easy ways to answer principal's questions about the benefits of your solution. Um, the other thing that really jumps out in here, you know, by the way, we've limited the respondents we presented to those who play more than a you know five percent role. Um, so in some cases, like if you look at uh, the length of the bar for small business under accounting, there were lots of folks who were involved, but not very heavily. Um, so some categories are clearly dominated by the principal. So for example. If you look at internet access, almost nine out of 10 respondents said, that's me. Um, so pretty clear that's who uh, internet and telecoms companies should be targeting uh, within very small businesses. But, you know, for example, if you look at the role of the principal in telecoms for very small businesses, they've got a lot of support. You know, it stands to reason they have much bigger organizations, they have much more depth of hierarchy uh, to which they can delegate uh, research. Um, so. The other big takeaway is, you know, the bigger the company, the more important it is to target roles. And typically, not probably surprisingly, um, the role to target is very much function specific. So, you know, for financial applications, it's going to be the head of the finance or perhaps an external or internal CPA or bus even business banker. 
um, for HR, not surprisingly, the head of HR is going to play a really significant role and is very worth targeting. Uh, and for you know technology solutions like internet access, hardware, uh, security solutions, really makes sense to target the principal and the head of IT, especially at companies with more than 20 employees. Um, and you know, same holds true here. If you look on the left, we asked about IT and data security solutions, again, like a McAfee or Sophos, uh, head of IT is very important, or you know, IT consultants, third parties, clearly uh, really important. Marketing applications, obviously, the head of marketing, uh, really important. Merchant processing, that it's interesting there, you see you know, a variety of roles uh, get involved in determining what kind of payment solution uh, a company is gonna be using at bigger companies. And then finally, um, for PCs and laptops, again, you know, as I mentioned, head of IT is really important after the principal. Um, for productivity applications, like uh, again, Word or uh, the G Suite, um, you know, there's a variety of folks. Kind of surprising the IT head wouldn't be there. They should be targeted because they're going to play a key role there, obviously. Uh, and then for video conferencing, you know, like telecommunications, uh, the head of IT is really important to target in addition to the principal. Um, so that's it. Those are the big takeaways uh, in terms of, again, what SMBs are looking at acquiring uh, for this year, whether it's upgrade or net new, um, what media they're using, again, at a pretty high level, um, which influencers looking for, what kind of benefits they want, who specifically within an organization they want to target. The very last question that I wanted to take you through that we asked uh, of SMBs was, how they want to engage with a salesperson. Again, this could be a whole research initiative, but we just boiled it down here to four different options. You know, when they're researching a product or a service, which might be quite complicated or not, um, you know, then that's obviously going to vary quite a bit on, you know, to what degree the solution they're looking at as a, com a commodity or, you know, very sophisticated and requires customization. Um, but as a general rule, very small businesses, uh, 46%, they are most likely to say, hey, you know what, we conduct all research ourselves, you know, don't call us, we'll call you. Although, you know, a fair number, 38% say, you know what, we do most of the research ourselves, but we're open to a salesperson answering questions. Um, whereas if you look at small businesses, the middle circle here, a um, little bit less likely to say, leave us alone, you know, we'll do all research ourselves, um, more likely than very small businesses to say, you know, we're open to a call, much more likely um, to say, you know, we'd like to have a salesperson help us out. Um, and then for big businesses, very similar uh, to the small business 2099, um, you know, very likely to, uh, or, you know, somewhat likely, I should say, to want to do research on their own, but also, you know, very receptive to getting help uh, from a salesperson or seeking it out. Um, and the big takeaway, of course, is that um, there are very different dynamics or preferences at play among the SMB market, depending on, you know, even within uh, different size groupings. So really important to make it easy for those who want to conduct self-service to do so on your site, uh, or, you know, for those who want help to get it, whether it's by chat or, you know, some other way for them to get their questions answered. Um, so that's it. Um, thank you for bearing with me. I hope this research is uh, useful and thought provoking and you know, might have teed, teed off some questions on your part for further research. If we can help you with that, we would love to. Um, we do, as you may have gathered, uh, research, whether it's via the pulse on a you know, quasi custom basis or full custom research, um, we can help as well with the promotion of your services and offerings to the small business audience uh, via custom content. So with that, what I wanted to do actually is pop up a quick final poll, uh, which is um, whether you would like outreach uh, and specifically to uh, connect with us to discuss research or content support. So uh, if you have an answer there, please share it. And with that, I am going to close. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to shoot me an email. You can see my uh, email address, stu at braden.com, or you, know, you may well have some <laughs> reminders of the webcast being come up. If you'd like a copy of this deck, please uh, let us know. Uh, more than happy to send that for a recording. And otherwise, we will look forward to hosting you on our next webcast, which will be coming up. In the meantime, have a great day.
Take care.